Oh boy, oh boy, I've made so many mistakes when it comes to bodybuilding training and putting on as much muscle as possible. So I wanna share my five biggest bodybuilding lessons that I wish I learned earlier with you so you can prevent these mistakes and make more progress faster, all right? So lesson number one, this was a good one. Less is more when it comes to volume. So what does that mean? Quality over quantity. I used to think, and I was kind of brainwashed into thinking that you needed so much more volume than you actually were doing to build muscle because all the studies showed volume, volume, volume. The problem with volume is you run into junk volume. Junk volume is essentially when you're doing more than is necessary. The main goal when it comes to building muscle is stimulate, not annihilate, as the saying goes. Stimulate muscle with enough intensity and then recover so you're stronger and you can come back and do it again. So it's more about quality sets versus total sets. Let me give you an example. So let's say for chest, I do, let's say I was doing 10 sets of chest, right? And I was doing, let's say five sets of bench press, three sets of flies, and then two sets of another movement, right? Doesn't sound like a lot of volume, but if it's not intense enough, if the quality of work is poor, meaning that my form wasn't good, I wasn't getting a good pump or contraction in my chest, how efficient was that workout? So what I would recommend is always want to start with as low a volume as you can handle and build up because you can always add volume. You can always add volume if it's not enough. So for example, let's say when it comes to pushing, if you did two sets of a heavy bench press and you were able to make sure those sets were quality, the intensity was high, you felt good mind-muscle connection when you were doing that, right? Those two sets. And you were able to beat the logbook every time by adding more weight, by adding more reps. Who's to say that doing more sets is going to do more? It might not. It might. It really depends. But again, it's about that quality work. I'd rather you do two heavy, heavy sets, of like intense, good quality contractions on for chest as opposed to doing 30 sets. So I really want you to think about that quality over quantity. So however many sets you're doing for chest right now, or I'm using chest as an example, but however many sets you're doing right now per body part, I want you to ask yourself, how many of those sets are quality? Because there'll be times when I'm in a workout and I'm halfway through my workout and I'm like, the first half of this workout was quality. It was good sets. I stimulated the muscle. And the second half, not so much. So arguably, I did junk volume for the rest of that, those sets. So think about this. Quality over quantity. Don't rush to do more. Focus on doing better. Okay? That was the first lesson. Lesson number two. This is a tough one to swallow. It was a tough one for me to swallow at first because I thought I was going to be beyond this. But the max that you're going to gain of muscle in your career, aside from the newbie phase, is going to be five pounds of muscle a year, okay? Now, I want you to visualize what five pounds of lean steak looks like. That's how much muscle you're going to put on your whole frame in a year. So this process is not fast. If you eat more calories than your body needs, you're going to put on more fat than that muscle that we're trying to build. Remember, five pounds. And I'm just going to say on average, I'm taking this number across the board. On average, five pounds of muscle. Some people will gain more. Some people will gain less just on average, right? So with that said, it's not a race to eat more. If your maintenance calories is 3,000 and you're eating 5,000, 6,000 calories, you're just putting yourself in a larger surplus and more of that excess is not going to go to muscle building. It's going to go to body fat. And when you put on too much body fat, you have to diet longer to take that body fat off. Not ideal. You're a bodybuilder, not a body sculptor. It's not a dieting contest. This is a build as much muscle as you can, right? And in order to do that effectively, you can't get over fat. Now, remember, your maintenance calories is always going to move, right? Because your body is always adapting to what you're doing. So if you're eating 3,000 calories, there's maintenance right now, and you eat 3,500 in order to build more muscle, eventually that 
3,500 will become your maintenance and you'll have to walk that up. But that's different. If your maintenance currently is 3,000 and you jump to, to 5,000, you're just going to lay down a lot of body fat and that's not good. And I've made that mistake so many times where I just ate and ate and ate and I wasn't good with the outcome. It ended up being more dieting than actually building. And that's not good. So that was the second lesson. Max of five pounds a year. So it doesn't take a lot of calories to add those five pounds of muscle. All right. Now, number three is tension. Tension over bodybuilding standards. What the hell does that mean? Well, tension is what's going to grow the muscle the best. And most gurus would tell you, you need to do squats to grow your legs, or you need to do this movement to grow your legs or to grow your body. You need to do rows or this or that, or pull-ups. You have to do pull-ups in order to build a big back. Now, that might be true for some of you. And why might that be true for some of you? Because you create tension in that targeted muscle in a different way than most do. So I'll give you a real world example. Squats. I was a power lifter, I can squat very heavy, uh, and I do have big thighs. But if I wanted to really, really grow my quads, I wouldn't choose squats for that movement. I would choose a hack squat because a hack squat for me puts the most tension on my quads. When I do a squat, it's more of a glute dominant movement for me. So the tension is not on my quads. Now, same thing. Let's focus on chest, right? Everybody tells you, you need to bench on um, flat bench. You need to do a flat bench. Now, arguably, you're going to create more tension in the pecs if you do like a low incline dumbbell, right? And if you're creating the tension, you're going to get the development from it. So it's the same thing. You got to find those movements that work for you and create the most tension in that muscle for you. For me, I can do a barbell bench press and create a lot of tension in my pecs and have a good mind muscle connection with it. So for me, a barbell bench press is a really good movement. Whereas when I do a machine, I feel it more in my shoulders. It's just the way my body is built. But you need to find those tension movements for you. And I talked about this in other videos, my biceps. I, get, I create a lot of tension in my biceps when I do dumbbells versus when I do barbell work for my biceps. Everyone is different. You need to find those movements for yourself. Remember, tension over conventional bodybuilding movements. Okay? Lesson number four, the shiny object syndrome. We all suffer from this. Your favorite influencer puts out a new program or touts the benefits of this and that. And you're like, well, that must be the missing secret. That's why I'm not getting the results that I need. So I need to go and do that. It's nonsense. We've done it so many times before. This person says low volume. This person says high volume. This person says this. This person says that. Stop having shiny object syndrome. You need to really keep a detailed log on your own body. Your own body is your own science project. And you can't look around at what everybody else is doing because everybody else is different. Like I said, for me, bench press is a king movement. I really generate a lot of tension in my pecs when I do that. Other people get nothing out of a barbell bench press. So you might not, listening to me might not get you a big chest or it might if you respond to the bench press like I do. So having shiny object syndrome is gonna slow your gains totally down. So instead, you need to focus on what works for you. And the way you do that is by keeping detailed notes and, okay, this movement, I feel a lot. This amount of volume works for me. I see progress when I do this. I'm able to recover and beat the logbook. You have to keep these detailed notes on yourself. Stop looking at everybody else like they do with the horses. Put the blinders on and just look at the one person that you need to beat in the mirror every day, which is yourself. All right? Bodybuilding lesson number five. Don't waste money on supplements. I've wasted a ton of money throughout my bodybuilding career on supplements. Now, I don't want to sit here and say supplements don't matter and you shouldn't use them. I just don't think it's necessary. If you never bought any supplement and you focused on the four lessons I talked about earlier, you're going to get better results than if you invest in any supplement. Supplements only matter 1% of the equation. Think about it. 1% of the equation. So if we use what I said earlier in point number two about you're going to gain five pounds of muscle a year, if you, we're talking about five pounds of muscle a year, 1% of that is nothing. 
So it's not even going to make a difference. Save your money when it comes to supplements and focus instead on a good workout logbook. Focus on keeping detailed notes about yourself and ride that out into the sunset. Stop having shiny object syndrome. This supplement is not going to be the thing that's going to take your results to the next level. It, I promise it's not. So supplements aren't magic. And I feel like we all kind of know that, but we hope that when we buy the supplement, it's going to make a difference. But I'm here to tell you that it's not. Okay. So those five bodybuilding lessons are so, so important. I wish I had paid attention and I knew them earlier because they would have prevented me, one, from wasting a ton of money on supplements, but it also would have kept me on the right path. Because like I said earlier, you need to put the blinders on and focus on yourself and not get distracted by other things that happen to you. And because you made it this far into the video, I have a free gift for you. I'm going to give you a free six-week training program to help you build more muscle mass. All you got to do is click that link below and download the program. No strings attached. All right, guys, until next time, this was Anthony, AB Fitness, and I'll catch you on the next one.